Coming up on show 646, got some pricing for you for the VW ID3, at least in Europe. A Tesla adds some big batteries down under, and the Porsche Taycan is delayed. Why? Those stories and many more coming up on your show today for EV News Daily, the edition for Tuesday, 19th of November. Uh, my name is Martin Lee, going through every EV story that I can find to save you time. Thank you for listening today. Thank you for your continued support on Patreon. Thank you to myev.com for helping make this show and my premium partners as well. In the USA, by the way, if you haven't checked them out, then myev.com is a website all about buying and selling and learning about EVs, connecting buyers and sellers. Maybe you're in the market, maybe you're going to treat yourself sometime an early Christmas present for you, uh, check out the buy section of myev.com. Have a little look around where you live in the USA. See if there's a little bargain that you can lay your hands on. So, according to Reuters, the first of a couple of, of a few Volkswagen stories today, actually. First up from Reuters, Volkswagen's CEO, Herbert Diess, just told investors that the ID3 is going to cost 40% less to build than an equivalent e-Golf. And, of course, they are still making the e-Golf. Not that the ID3 is anything like a Golf. It just it's the same size, shape, price point. Looks like a Golf. Don't call it a Golf. Whatever you do, it's the ID3. That's an enormous reduction, though. Forty percent less to make one, and it's one of the reasons why Volkswagen says the ID3 will retail for the same money as a well-equipped Golf diesel. That's the promise they've stuck to all along. It's the secret source that will allow the company to meet its goal of selling millions of electric vehicles, says Clean Technica. The ID3 will start at €30,000 in Europe, the first edition version with a more powerful motor for 40000 But Volkswagen, they say, have plans for cars as low as 20000 and that's all according to a Clean Technica article, which I will link through in the show notes. But, 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 let me give you an email newsletter that was sent out by Volkswagen-Online.de. Now, that's the domain from which the newsletter comes from. Uh, this is from somebody I know who is signed up to a German newsletter for the ID3. These numbers do back up what I saw floating around on the internet a couple of weeks ago, but were in... Uh, one of them was a French language website, and I didn't know how much authority to place in that. But now, this seems to be an official newsletter from Volkswagen. But like I say, I can't establish that Volkswagen-Online.de is their official domain. It, it, it absolutely looks like it is. So we'll go with it. And it's listed, it's sent out earlier today, the prices for the ID3 first edition. That is going to be the middle one in the range. There will be cheaper and more expensive ones. And I've been telling everybody the VW ID3 first edition comes in at under €40,000, and it does if you want the base model for the first edition. Typical automotive company here having lots of options and specs to choose from. So let me run them through and see what you think of this. The VW ID3 first, the base model, at least in Germany, this is a German newsletter and I'm using Google Translate, is called Full Comfort. At least that's the Google Translate version of the spec. Full comfort. That starts at less than €40,000. Then you've got the ID3 First Edition Plus, which is described as the Stylish Edition. And that starts at less than €46,000, getting pricier. And then there's the VW ID3 First Max High Tech Edition. Now, this is the top spec of the ID3 First, which, like I say, is the middle one of the three. But anyway, bear with me. This is a premium premium price segment. It's premium equipment, though, state-of-the-art high-tech features, but the max version starts at 50, or they say less than, so, okay, 49,999, 50,000 euros. So you get 420 kilometers of range, or rather the phrase that I found in the very small print of the article, of the newsletter, look, which looks very, very official from VW, 420 kilometers... B de Mittelleren battery variant, 58 kilowatt hours netto. So, even my attempt at German would be that would be 420 kilometers from the battery variant, which is 58 kilowatt hours net. That's what is usable. So it's a bigger battery, but you don't get access to all of the, 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 the battery. So, you get access to 50, 58. Now, the equipment highlights of the 
Max Edition, 20-inch alloy wheels, cockpit information with an augmented reality head-up display, a panoramic glass roof, a Beats premium sound system, driver assist called Travel Assist, it's got lane keep assist, lane change assist, uh, side assist, emergency assist, comfort seats with lumbar support and a massage function, a heat pump for range optimization, a telephone interface as well, inductive charging for your phone, and a special interior. And like I say, that is a lot of money at 50,000 euros. If I just do the conversion, 50,000 euros is $55,282. The Tesla Model 3 long-range all-wheel drive, let's just pick a, an equivalent car. Well, that is not much more. That's 54,000 euros. But that comes with not 420 kilometres of range, 560 kilometres of range. So... Arguably, yes, the long-range all-wheel drive Model 3 doesn't come with massage sheets, and it doesn't come with some other things that you get with the ID3 First Edition Max. But from all the promising of saying, oh, it'll cost less than €40,000, well, it will, but... There's always a but. If you want all the goodies and the toys, it's going to cost you nearer 50 what do you think of those prices? Would you buy what is not definitely not a Golf? It's not a Golf for fifty thousand euros just for the uh, the benefit of being in an in an EV. That to me seems like they're reliant on incentives, local incentives around the world, and, and people getting money off from the government and, and 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 other things as well in order to justify hopefully a lower price. I'd love to know your thoughts on that. I love the ID three. 50k is like I mean way out of what I that's that's crazy money for a, a brand new car I guess most people do do payments don't they but you know if I had 50,000 pounds in the bank and someone said do you want to keep this money in the bank or do you want to buy a car <laughs> you know what you yeah, know what I'll, I'll keep the money in the bank thanks okay let's move on Volkswagen will assemble its ID3 at Dresden in addition to the Zwickau plant the ID3 is the first model in the latest generation of VW uh, under their electric offensives as Green Car Congress. Following on from the uh, Dresden announcement, that is the second assembly plant, of course, after Zwickau. More vehicles from the MEB family are going to be leaving the assembly line from fall 2020. The plant could possibly assemble other models from the ID3 family, says this article. Let's move on to the big battery news that I told you about. The French renewable energy and storage developer Neon has confirmed that the so-called Tesla Big Battery at Hornsdale, South Australia, is indeed getting a lift in capacity, and it's a 50% uplift, adding new innovations and services to pave the way, they say, for South Australia to reach its goal of net 100% renewables, according to reneweconomy.com.au. The battery, known as the Hornsdale Power Reserve, will be the very first in Australia to provide digital or virtual inertia to the grid an important network service previously only delivered by synchronous machines running on coal gas and hydro and why is that important what is inertia it's all to do with how quickly when the grid needs to balance itself to remain at the same hertz i think i think anyway and if there is a sudden need for electricity it happens in milliseconds right and some of these other forms of generation can take up to several seconds to start delivering power and some of them are always on some of them aren't but i gather some of them are kind of left in tick over mode just burning fossil fuels in case the grid needs instant power but that instant power doesn't quite happen enough and that's what can cause big issues whereas tesla's virtual power plant the battery pack can provide instant i mean instant within hundreds of milliseconds of power and that solves a really big headache for the grid i think that's right correct me if i'm wrong uh, the addition to the tesla power back at a cost of 71 million aussie dollars is going to add 64.5 megawatt hours of capacity uh, lifting the capacity by 50 percent reinforcing its ranking as the world's biggest lithium-ion battery storage project after the first full year of operation the batteries already saved consumers 50 million aussie dollars those savings continue to grow once the new addition is in place in 2020 
and it earned a profit of 22 million in its very first year of operations. There is nothing bad about this. This is this is a massive success by any means of measuring it. Fantastic. Well done to the Tesla team, and indeed well done to everybody involved in that. Let's talk about a couple of marine-related EV news. On my recent asking for feedback about this show, a few people said, uh, more about boats, please. So I'm always on the lookout for more marine stories. ZF has developed an electric drive system for sailing yachts. For this purpose, the German supplier is installing an electric motor with an output of 125 kilowatts connected to ZF's steerable pod propulsion system. It says Electrive, with the electric auxiliary drive rather than a diesel engine, sailing yachts can then travel emissions and indeed noise-free when departing, when mooring, and also calling at ports that are currently closed to yachts with conventional power drives because of environmental regulations, which are increasing all the time, and staying on the water. There's a company called Torquedo, T-O-R-Q-E-E-D-O, and they're celebrating their 15th year of technology innovations with 100,000 electric drive units now delivered around the world. Torquedo offers a product line of things like outboard engines, inboard electric drives, and sail drives from half a kilowatt to 100 kilowatts, and they provide high-capacity lithium batteries. Torquedo is launching two new motors next year, actually. A new professional-grade ultralight motor for kayak anglers and a 20-horsepower equivalent outboard motor with tiller steering. Also coming next year, new fast chargers, new solar charge controllers as well uh, for their power series of lithium batteries. Torquedo's high-power Deep Blue system is also getting improvements with quieter-than-ever outboards and things like integration of joysticks, third-party throttles and wireless controls as well. Big EV things happening on the water which don't always get reported. Right. Onto Bugatti next. And Bugatti's long rumoured additional model could run on electricity rather than gasoline. According to a recent report, the company is tentatively planning a downward expansion without diluting its image, says Autoblog. What's a downward expansion? Well, I guess when you're Bugatti, you can make fewer cars, charge a lot for them, and still be successful. The company isn't interested in chasing volume with an alternative to something like the Volkswagen. E uh, ID3 uh, are doing a Bugatti version. No, no, no. They want an electric four-seater priced between half a million and a million euros. Bugatti CEO Stephen Winkleman told the publication that convincing the parent company Volkswagen to fund a $1.1 million EV is a hard fight, is the phrase they used. I'll pop a link to Autoblog in the show notes. And finally, a recent post on the Facebook Porsche Taycan group reveals the Taycan is currently running on a delivery delay of up to almost three months, actually, ten weeks. A Norwegian reservation holder received an email from the German automaker explaining the situation. Says so Stephen Lovebed Inside EVs. We've seen multiple EV launches have similar issues. The Audi e-tron has fallen behind numerous times and continues to experience delays. Even Jaguar had some delays at the start of the iPACE. And now Porsche, it seems, needing to push things back just a little bit until they actually get cars in the hands and driveways of customers. Right, we'll finish off with question of the week this week. And here's an interesting question. If you were the one who was the, the chief marketing officer of a, an EV car company, how would you market EVs? Would you run TV ads? And if you did, what would be on that TV ad? And what else would you do? Let me know. Email me. Hello at evnewsdaily.com or leave a comment on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, uh, YouTube is what I mean. I've only done this 650 times. Well, thank you to 251 patrons of the podcast who put up with me getting things wrong after all of these attempts. And funding this podcast. Couldn't do it without you. Thank you very much to my premium partners. Uh, that would be you, Phil Roberts of Electric Future, Brad Crosby and Avid Technology. Indeed, there are 645 previous shows. I'll get good one day. At uh, the new ones, though, hey, I come at you. If you're a subscriber on your podcast app or maybe Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and the rest, come and say hi on socials by searching EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. Catch you soon. And do remember, there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid. <laughs>